Hey guys, it's Bart. And Dave. And we're back. We're back in New York City, as you could tell. And you must be wondering, how did we get here? No, we did not rent an RV and go cross country. And we got back on a plane. Yeah, and this was uh, this trip was honestly giving me night sweats for months. Just imagining worst case scenarios, of having a four day old baby on a flight with us. Dave would wake up at like three in the morning, like yeah. with night terrors of this three and a half hour flight. It was no good. No good. No. No. But we're here. We made it. We made it. We're really excited. We want to give you some tips on how we did it unscathed. But I don't know, Dave. Two episodes ago, we had this amazing outfit. Yeah, I was really excited about. Yeah, this is kind of boring. This is boring, right? Yeah. Should we change? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Dave, what are you wearing? <laughs> Air traffic controller. Well, though I see that, yeah. but you don't even own a driver's license. How are you going to direct traffic of airplanes? Suspension of belief, Bart. Suspension <laughs> of belief. <laughs> Air newborn. I should have paid attention to what these batons were actually used for. I, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to put them down. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I take these off. Please do. Um, so yeah, tell so us. Uh, we have some, some tips, tips, don't we? We do. All right. Tip number one: regulation. So you got to check with your airline before you fly. Every airline is different in what they allow as far as the age of the baby. So for instance, Delta and United from Denver only allowed children of age seven days old, right? Seven days old or older and with a doctor's note. And for JetBlue, it actually allowed three days at least and with the doctor's note. So for us, we went with JetBlue. We got a sign off from our doctor. Yeah. Before. Although what's weird is that they didn't actually check the physician's letter that we had, so we literally probably could have brought a younger baby on board. We, we wouldn't have wanted to anyways, but like the baby could have popped out and could have still been covered in slime and we could have brought it onto the plane with us. Don't recommend that. <laughs> Don't do that. See a physician before you fly. Next. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you know if there's ever a time to you know splurge on a business class ticket or you know, an upgrade, like this is the flight to do it. In our case, they didn't have a business class cabin, but we bought an extra seat. Uh, so we had the full row and you know, just were nervous about some random sort of you know, person with a cold or with the flu sitting next to us and uh, coughing all over our baby. So it was just really nice to have that extra seat and we could also have it for storage because we brought a ton of stuff, baby stuff. On so much stuff. With us. Yeah. yeah. Next, when we got into that actual row, this is where hygiene comes in. So before Dave and the baby entered, I got in with my best friend, Clorox. And what I did is I took different wipes and I scrubbed the seats and the monitors and the armrests and the seat belts. Yeah, and the fold-out tables. And the fold-out tables. Yeah, he was like a crazy person. Yeah. Was like, everybody was laughing at him. He was like furious, frantic with the Clorox wipes. But I've never been that person to like Clorox everything or bring around Purell never been that person but now that we have a baby that's more susceptible to getting sick because there's very little immunity she has you know it's important my it's baby important. comes number one yeah thanks Clorox and another thing uh, and this was actually something that even the nurses at the hospital uh, told us we told them we were flying back with you know Sloan being such a young age is um, especially with takeoffs and with landings with altitude changes you know just think about adults you know we get nasal congestion or ears pop and it's no different for babies so one of the things that you know, we heard is that it's very, very useful to have a pacifier with you and for the baby to suck on this, you know, whenever the plane is kind of moving, shifting between different altitudes, just sort yeah. of, you know, helps with, helps with that. Yeah. And the last thing we would say is prepare for the worst. We had an amazing experience. We had no delays. Our baby never cried the entire three and a half hour flight. She was an angel. Seriously. But we were expecting the worst, and we're glad we did, right? We had extra formula, milk, diapers, diapers, wiping pads. Yeah. We were prepared for like the exorcist baby, where you know her head would rotate and she'd be projectile vomiting all over everything, poop but, everywhere. Yeah. But but no, it never happened. She was an angel. It was great. But just in case that did happen, we were prepared, and you should be prepared too. Yeah. So just uh, honestly, what's going to happen most likely is she's going to sleep the whole time and you are going to get so much attention from flight attendants, all of these passengers congratulating you and you're going to have a safe and painless trip back home or you can get settled in and sort of get back into your routine with your support system with you know your very, very precious cargo. So good luck with your travels and until next time. Bye guys. <laughs>